right, y'all. So this is video number six. Uh, today, I wanted to jump into organization. I wanted to jump into some of the things that uh, <clears throat> you need to do um, in order for you to stay organized and so that you're not all over the place and you can work more effectively because of that. Um, I didn't forget, though, in the last video, we kind of went a little bit over, um, you know, and, and, and the explanation of the lower boards and stuff like that, the process of dispatching. Uh, using my system of, of Connect Team. I didn't get a chance to call any brokers, so I'm going to do that quickly in this video before jumping into organization. The other thing I wanted to do was go over factoring. I wanted to quickly go over factoring. So um, let me actually jump out. <clears throat> One second. Let me jump out of here. So. If you remember in the last video that we spoke about, uh, just to go again quickly, pass and review so that we all have an understanding, right? When I go to book a load, okay, let me, you know, refresh this really quick. Let's say, for example, I like this load from York, Pennsylvania to Tampa, Florida. They got a good credit score, everything's good, 40,000 pounds. Let's say we book this load for $2,800, $3,000. Let's just say, hypothetically, right? 40,000 uh, pounds. Anyways, we book in it for $2,500. Now, what happens is Shine Logistics LLC, I, after I make sure the factoring company approves of them. So actually, let me, let me just go step by step to show you. So look, Shine Logistics, they have a good credit score. Credit score... I'm sorry, MC number is 105978. We're going to come here. 105978. Now, remember, guys, this is TBS. <coughs> certain, certain factoring companies operate a little bit differently. Oftentimes, a factoring company will have a system where you can check their credit through an online platform or database. You're going to have your carrier, whoever you're dispatching for, allow you access to that database. If they don't, ask them for the number. You're going to want to get the hotline number for that factoring company because then all you can, all you, all you have to do then is just call the factoring company hotline number and do a quick credit check on this broker. But in this case, I can use TBS. Uh, they have a system where I can search on their database. So I'm going to go here, take that Shine, I think it was what, Shine Logistics. Yep. Check them. It says that I'm able, it says, congratulations, you have been approved for up to 5,000, which is fine because I'm not looking to go anything over. I might, for this load, uh, if I'm trying to reach a quota, let's say my dry, uh, company, trucking company I'm dispatching for, let's say they have a quota of two point, you know, let's say 2.6. Uh, so they're looking to get $2.60 a mile, nothing under. So 2.6 times. 1035 now quickly before i jump into that let me show you guys something that i get into a little bit more in another video but you always want to have this tab up you always want to have a google maps tab up because you want to cross reference the uh, route that they give you so they're saying york pa to tampa florida so let's say you're in harrisburg so from you to harrisburg from harrisburg to york i should say to Tampa, Florida. Now, obviously, it's going to be a little bit more miles. So it says 1,026. This one says 1,035. So actually, that's about right. Um, but mind you, this is you leaving from Harrisburg to then go to York to then go to Tampa. Another thing you want to keep in, in mind, have this Google Maps up as an, uh, a way to look at the routes. <clears throat> so you want to see the route they're going to take, right? You also want to verify that uh, the mileage is correct. So if they're putting 1,035, uh, DAT probably automatically generates the mileage. Sometimes they're a little off, but either way, they're placing the broker pl placed in the, for the load going from York to Tampa. Now, the zip code might be not exactly in York. It might be like 15 miles out. And the zip code in Tampa might not be exactly in Tampa. It might be like 20 miles out. So you're looking about about 35 to 40 miles in deadhead, possibly, if that's not the actual trip mileage. So you always want to have Google Maps up to verify. So we're looking about, 
the same. 1026, even if I left from Harrisburg, 1035. So let's just say 1035. You're going to multiply 1035 times 2.6 because you're trying to reach the <coughs> client, your client's quota, which your driver's quota. That equals 2,691. So now you're going to jump into this call automatically knowing that you're not going to go under 2,691. Now just round it up, 2,700. So you know in your head you have to get no less than 2,700 on this load. Now because you're a dispatcher, you want to pay yourself. You might uh, uh, negotiate this rate <clears throat> instead of 2,700, 2,800. That's your go-to rate. That's your your. That's what you're looking for. Twenty eight hundred. You might go a little bit less, but you're definitely not going to go under twenty seven hundred because then you're going under the quota that you your your client has set for you. So, let's say we agree on this load. I call them. They're willing to do twenty eight hundred. So they're willing to do twenty eight hundred. What they're going to do next is they're going to email me. They're going to send me an email with the rate confirmation. I'm going to take that rate confirmation. Usually, it's in a PDF form. I'm going to take it, upload it. When I upload it, because it's a PDF form, I'm going to bring it here. Remember the example I showed you guys? Uh, I'll, I'll even go back and I'll show you again. I'm going to take that rate confirmation that, that uploads. It's going to pop up as this. Let's say it's two. Now, now, now you have all your details for your load, right? The pickup location, all this stuff. Let's say you know York to uh, just use your imagination. York to Tampa, right? Has all the details. They're telling me they're going to pay me twenty eight hundred. All that good stuff. I have everything now. If the driver, <clears throat> if the driver is an owner operator, meaning that they own their trucking company, they own their MC number, and they drive. They're allowed to see all this information, the payment information. So you don't need to alter the PDF. You just send them the whole thing, right? You might not want to send them. Well, yeah, you send them the whole thing. You send them everything. So you can download this, take it now to your Connect team, upload it, send it to them so that they have it, and then send it to them separately in, in an email. But let's say it's a driver. Let's say it's a driver and they're not allowed to see the payment information. You're going to take this. This page, they definitely don't need. You're going to go to page, delete that. Now you only have this page. Now you're going to white out all the information that doesn't show the pickup and drop off. All they need, the driver, is the pickup and drop off. You take that, you download it. It's going to come up here. It's going to automatically store on your downloads. You're going to go to Connect Team. This is, again, guys, all of, this, all of these websites are in the website links as a part of this course. Um, you're going to get a subscription with Connect Team. You're going to go to Users. If your driver isn't set up already, go to Users, Add Users, put the driver's name, first and last name, and their number. Uh, Connect Team is going to send them a link. They're going to have to get set up. Once they're set up in your system, you're going to use the Quick Tax feature. Quick Tax, add a single task, put Dispatch. You know, I'm not going to actually go through that again because if you go to my last video, you can see what I, what I do. You put dispatch, put the PO number or the load ID number of that rate confirmation sheet. Put all the stuff you need to put here. Now the load is dispatched. Okay, now the load is dispatched. Now, you're going to take that rate confirmation sheet that you had for 2800 right? Because when the, bro when, the, when the broker sends you that, you're going to have to upload it to PDF. Let me, let me backtrack a little bit because uh, I want to make sure I'm showing you guys in detail. So let me backtrack. So this is the original rate confirmation. I'm going to want to sign it, put the driver's name, put his cell phone. Remember, trailer and tractor, that's usually for bigger companies. If the company you're working for actually does have trailer numbers and tractor numbers, they'll place that in the carrier agreement form that you have signed up with them. You're going to place that information all in here. Sign it, send it back, <clears throat> go to your email, send it back to the broker. Now that load is yours. Now it, that's when you're going to come in here and alter the rate confirmation sheet so that your driver can have it. If the driver is not able to see the payment information, then you're, you're going to want to come in here and alter this PDF so that all they can see is the pickup location, the drop-off location, the times, all that good stuff. Upload this, go to Connect Team, upload it, send it to your driver. 
now you're good to go all right so <clears throat> once you do that you take that so you that rate confirmation sheet that that you have you take that and you email it to the company owner whoever owns that trucking company let's say it's whoever you put their name you send them that rate confirmation sheet that you just signed and then or you have two options you can send it to them immediately or you can wait until the load actually gets complete let me move this real quick you can wait till the load actually gets complete once the load gets complete remember your driver is going to place in the comments they're going <clears> to <throat> they're going to place in the comments uh the load so look, look at this one for example in the comments they're going to place the b bill of lading waiting for this to load All right, this one's a little jacked up, <laughs> but here's an example. They sign it, the driver signs it, they put the time, the date. <clears throat> <clears throat> this solidifies the load. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna take this information. I'll show you guys how to factor really quick with TBS. <clears throat> you're gonna take that, you're gonna download that image, right? Now you're gonna go to your email to where they sent you that rate confirmation sheet. I'm just pulling up an, an old one. So now <clears throat> you have your rate confirmation sheet, the one that you signed. You have the bill of lading that's attached to that rate confirmation sheet. Now, for TBS, this is how you factor with TBS. They have a system where you can just literally send info at tbs.com, okc.com, other factoring companies might have a database where you just upload these documents. All The only documents they ask for is the bill of lading, the rate confirmation sheet, and that's it. Now, TBS, they ask you for a cover sheet. So in this subject, you're going to want to put like something like schedule because that's what they call their factoring. Uh, whenever you send invoices, it's called a schedule. So you just put schedule. And here, you're going to take that photo of the bill of lading. You're gonna take that rate confirmation sheet. Now you have the rate confirmation sheet, the photo. Now here's something else that TBS requires. They require you, man, let me click off of here. They require you to upload a, uh, what's called an exhibit B. It, act, it acts as a cover sheet for that load, just so it, you know, so they stay more organized. So you're gonna take that exhibit B form. I actually have one. Uh, I'll give you guys an example of one. Let me go here, dispatch clients, uh, exhibit B right here. So an exhibit B is just a cover sheet. Literally you come in here. I'll even, I'll show you guys really quick, you know, how exactly I do it. So I come in here, I use text. I always make sure my texts are at least 15 and bold. I'll come in here and I'll put the name ABC brokerage, right? Uh, let's say the, remember the reference number or the load number? Right, I'll jump back so you guys can see. The reference number or the load number is always going to be the number that identifies that specific rate confirmation sheet. So in this case, it is LDS. I can take it and copy it. Sometimes you can't copy it, just memorize it. <clears throat> You're going to go back here to your Exhibit B. Oh, it won't let me uh, do it, but it won't let me copy it into the PDF, but that's fine. I'll just put LDS, you know, let's say that was the load ID number. You're going to want to put your rate. Be very specific. If the the rate was twenty eight hundred, make it look as professional as possible. Twenty eight hundred for deductions, guys. Always put zero. And and this is for TBS. If you're uh, factoring for TBS, uh, each carrier that you have might have a separate way of factoring. They might have a different factoring company, so they might have different uh, procedures. Generally, they're all the same. Usually, other factoring companies don't ask for all of this. They don't ask for a cover sheet. They just want the rate confirmation sheet and the bill of lading to prove that you actually ran that load. So now this guy, uh, let's say they're getting an ACH sent to them, uh, amount to factor. Don't worry about any of this other stuff, guys. All you're doing is just putting the information. Remember, it was 2,800. Now, in total, 2,800. Now let's just say the way you factor is every week you factor. 
So let's say at the end of the week you did five loads. Well, now you could just place another load. Place the name of the company, place the load ID number, place the amount, and then always place zero for these, and then place the amount here again. Now the total would obviously be the total of all your loads that you factor. Now me personally, I factor each load right after it's done, so that way there's no confusion, and that way the company gets paid every day. Uh, because once you send this information, uh, as long as you send it before 5 p.m., uh, the way TBS operates, they'll literally purchase the invoice that day and pay you the very next morning. But let's say the company, the trucking company you work for, your client says, you know what, just just factor every week. So now you wait until the end of the week, you factor uh, every load on Thursday so that they can get paid by Friday morning. Plus, that'll be the day that you invoice them if that's how what you decide you want to do is invoice them every Friday. That's how I operate. Um, and now the number of pages you have this page which is one the rate confirmation in the bol you're gonna put three you're gonna put the date you know 12 1 21 uh signature freehand remember guys this freehand option allows you to sign you're gonna sign your signature on behalf of their, that company which they authorized you to do in the uh, agreement form so you're allowed to do that you're gonna upload that Come back to your email, send that in there. I said it before and I'll say it again, guys. You gotta ha you have to be a little bit tech savvy. When I say tech savvy, this is not rocket science. It's just simple. It's just you being able to maneuver, you know, through the computer. You have to be able to know how to maneuver at a general basis, at least, to be able to effectively work. Now you got all this, you send it. I'm not gonna send it because guys, this is old. I'm gonna click off of that. But that's all you do. Once you send that, you send the information also to your a uh, trucking company that you're dispatching for they have the information the loads factored now you're good to go now um, <clears throat> eventually you'll go and invoice them once everything is is taken care of if you ever need to go back and find that load it'll be in here attached to everything's gonna be organized the way I explained it right so so that's literally how you go in and factor other companies might require uh, a different um, uh, and, and, and also, you have to keep in mind, some companies might not even want you to factor. They might just say, hey, book me the load. And all you have to do is send them over the information. I have a company that I dispatch for that they don't want me to invoice, which is fine. They say they, they, they do it themselves. I just send them over the information and they take care of it. But if you are doing that, that's an example of how you do it. Um, again, remember, TBS is the one who uh, goes a little bit through all of the extra uh you know stuff as far as you filling out an exhibit B cover sheet most other companies all you have to do is either email them the rate confirmation sheet the bill of lading proving as acting as a receipt for that load that I was taken care of send that to them it's factored they usually purchase the invoice that same day and pay the company the very next day so you want to keep on top of that and make sure you're invoicing uh, effectively so now before I jump into organization which is I want to get into next. I'm actually going to call a broker so you guys can get a live example of a call. So, give me one second. One second. <clears throat> I want to see something real quick. All right, let me call one of these guys. Now, because I'm not actually booking this load, it might be a brief conversation, which is fine. Uh, Let me find one. Uh, let me call these guys. This load still available. Look, coming into coming to the. So this one is going from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. It's 28 miles away from Harrisburg, going to Warrensdale, Pennsylvania. 240 miles. It's 43,000 pounds. For if if you ever want to see the rate per mile. 
being paid, you literally, all you have to do is take the amount they're willing to pay, which is 1200 If you don't see the amount, you have to call them to find it out. And you divide it by the, so you take this number, the amount that they're willing to offer, and divide it by the trip mileage. So this one's paying $5 a mile, which is actually pretty solid. But they're paying that much because look how much it weighs. And if you go to the comments, it stops in Harrisburg. So Warrendale. So it's going from Lebanon, PA to Warrendale. Remember, you go to the Google Maps. You're going to want to put Lebanon, PA. Warrendale, PA. So they're wanting you to pick up in, in Lebanon drop off in Warrendale, I mean Harrisburg, and then drop off in Warrendale, right? Because it says, right? Because it says stops in Harrisburg. So you're going to want to pick in Lebanon. They're most likely going to have to drop one in Harrisburg. Let me call them. I'll call them really quick. 